Hey guys, what's up? Hey, uh, sorry it's taking a little while to do a, another video. It, life takes over and you get busy with other things. My car, it's still down. Uh, currently, I did get another block, new, new cylinder heads. Those are at the machine shop right now. They're getting everything put together for me and I should have that back pretty quick here and I'll do a video on that. I didn't build it from scratch because personally, I've built motors before, but I'd rather have someone that that's what they do every single day, build the motor for me. That way I, you know, there won't be any mess ups or screw ups, just like how I, I work on S4s all the time, you know, that's what I do all the time. I can work on it. I know most of the stuff, but when it comes down to the nitty gritty on, on an engine build, I'd rather have someone that has all the proper tools build that for me. I have all the proper tools to work on an S4 for the most part. I personally send that stuff out. Hopefully next week sometime I'll get the motor back and I'll walk you guys through some of the stuff that the machine shop did and, and what they did for me. And I, you know, I'll show you what parts I installed in it. I was only able to save a few things off the old motor. When the motor goes through with no oil pressure, it kind of grenades everything. So I was able to save the rods. They checked out okay. I was able to save the cams and I was able to save the valves. Everything else is toast. Uh, turbos were okay as well, but everything else on there was just nothing was usable. I did get another car in. A client dropped it off. He was having some issues on it and wanted me to go through it. This is it. Yeah, it's an okay car. It's a little dirty. thing he wanted looked at is he did have a check engine light and an exhaust leak and then another major thing he was having is an issue with these windows the the rear drivers and the rear passenger window they will not go down I did check them out a couple months back there's some plastic bits that guide a wire that pulls the window up and pulls the window down and uh, the only way to fix that is actually to replace the whole unit engine still looks like it's in good shape again i'll just have to go through it real quick it's a little dirty coolant level is a little low look at that it's actually right there i'm gonna have to figure out why it's low two different diverter valves i don't know what happened there i'll have to talk to him about that We did have a thing that said there was no water in here, so I don't see anything. Maybe that's leaking, so I'll look into that real quick. That's low as well, so I'll add some fluids, see if it's leaking. It was just some general stuff, maintenance-wise, I need to go through and just take a look at it and make sure everything's good for him. And then I, I do need to find the exhaust leak and why he has a check engine light. All right, guys, let's see what we can figure out what's going on with this car. We'll check the check engine light. Charge pressure, there's an, a leak somewhere. B2 S1. S1, that's front. B2 is bank two, so this is the driver side. Front oxygen sensor is bad. No activity. Misfires. As you see, all the misfires are on bank two, which could be linked to the bad O2 sensor. What happens with the bad O2 sensor, uh, it doesn't know how that bank's doing as far as air fuel mixture rates. So the ECU will just be safe and dump a bunch of fuel in there. That could cause misfires. What will happen is I'll change out that sensor and then we'll clear all the codes and see if those misfires come back. We're looking for exhaust leaks.
Still a little soot under there. Not much. Hmm. Do you guys think that caused an exhaust leak? So I'll go ahead and fix that. He's missing a bolt here. I have that. I'll put that on there for him. Most likely that's the culprit why we have the crappy exhaust leaking noise. This has the normal oil leaks that a older S4 does. So I found the issue of uh, the coolant leak. You'll need a lower radiator hose. And then the power steering leaking as well. Look at that. I'll see if I could tighten this stuff up for him. You should saw some of that leakage from. That would cause a leak. Look at all that. Nice size dent. Loosen both of them up. Let's see if we can tighten this a little bit. There we go. And the reason I did that is to keep them from scraping all those off. There's plenty of room in here, especially once I fix that. Let's see if we can tighten it up. I'd normally suggest for people, see how it goes from three inch down to two and a half down to stock size. This is a huge restriction right here. I would cut this section out right here, this whole thing, and have a shop weld in a new piece right here and just have it extended. Not necessarily weld them together, just get a bigger one of these lip clamps. They're loose. This is actually not installed the right direction. It's supposed to be in the middle here. I don't like how this looks. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the ones I just tightened and uh, take this thing completely off and flip this around so it's in the right orientation. I ended up dropping the exhaust because I couldn't get that one piece out. I'll show you a little trick with the exhaust on how to move it to where you want it to be uh, so it looks good coming out the back. And you'll be able to move the exhaust around, keep it from banging into things. Uh, I'll show you that little trick in a sec. And another issue, this nut will not tighten down because this whole thing is stripped. I'll see if I have another one. Another strip bolt. That's why these things don't tighten. You'll need to put these two in. They actually go over here. Oh, I just disconnected so these could hang down a little farther. On the exhaust, see how it's not centered in here and it's all funky? Um, I'll show you guys that trick to move this so uh, it all stays in there and you could center everything the way you want it. I just keep finding things wrong or missing. For the exhaust hanger, it's missing that 13 millimeter bolt. And then another thing you guys need to watch out for when you have exhaust is this evap pipe right here. If it's close to this, it will melt and then you'll keep getting the check engine light. I will go ahead and wrap this for him, downpipe or header wrap, and that should help alleviate that issue of, of uh, him ever melting through that. After looking at the exhaust and how it was installed, the reason why this was off, see now I can move it, is... This bracket here that holds this exhaust, it was installed backwards. So I went ahead and fixed it, and now it actually fixed the exhaust. I could slide the exhaust back and forth and move it to where I needed to go. If you're doing this stuff at home, 
make sure you put a, install the stuff the correct way. If you don't know, take pictures before you take anything apart. Uh, that will greatly uh, help you out if, if you get stuck or you don't know what direction a parts are supposed to go. That trick I was going to show you uses these clamps and what happens, you move the exhaust to where you want it to go, you stick this on here and tighten it down and uh, you could do it on either side or both sides to where you want the exhaust to move and that will keep, uh, that'll keep the exhaust where you want it to go. But you first have to make sure the exhaust is installed properly before you start modifying and using stuff like this. If, if the exhaust is installed properly and you're still not ha you're having fitment issues, then you could use these, but install it correctly first and then go with these. Got it? Perfect. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but I fixed it. Parts I ordered for this car to fix came in, and let's see what we got here. Ooh. A rear window assembly. Pretty nice, hey? What normally happens is sometimes the window won't go up and down in the back, it'll break. This pivot point, the cable will actually come off this or this will break or any of these plastic parts. So I need to order these because I previously pulled apart the both door cards on this car and looked at it and saw that it needed it. I ordered one for the driver's side, one for the passenger side and the rear. Got another one, front O2 sensor and some O-rings. To get started, I'll, I'll go ahead and do the front O2 sensor first. It's uh, pretty easy. It's the driver's side. Uh, so let's get started. People that built this downpipe or made this downpipe, <clears throat> the O2 sensor is pushed up against the transmission. In order to orientate you, this would be the driver's side, front, back, passenger side. Uh, here you have the slave cylinder for the clutch, shifter. Now this downpipe comes down, the one on the car I'm working on. The O2 sensor is pressed all the way like that in here. How do you think I'm going to get that out and put a new one in? The whole downpipe might have to come out just to get this darn sensor out. Whoever made that downpipe made a huge mistake. So what goes from a 15 minute job to now it could be a couple hours. So you just have to make sure when for future mechanics out there, you guys bid on a job, especially cars that have been modified, and you try to go by book time or, or something even, uh, you know, oh, I've done this a lot of times, it'll take me 15 minutes, I'll, I'll charge them, you know, such and such. Make sure you look at the car first before you bid it because uh, that O2 sensor is going to be a pain in the butt to get out. In order to get this O2 sensor out, I had to remove the axle. You can see on this downpipe, that's where the O2 sensor is. Let's see if I get you a better shot. And you could see how it's getting blocked. I mean, the way they designed this, where they put this O2 bung is totally in the wrong spot. I had to loosen or I took all the bolts out of the downpipe just to give me more room to pull this O2 sensor out. It was it was hitting up against the slave cylinder and I couldn't get it out. Success, I was able to get the O2 sensor out by loosening the downpipe. It gave me enough room to get in there and, and pull it out. So I'll go ahead and yank out the rest, get get the whole thing out and install the new one and put everything back together. And hopefully that won't have to be done for a while. I got the uh, downpipe and everything and the axle and all that stuff put back. So that's all buttoned up. Now I just got to put all this back together. Got most of it put back together. Well, some of it. I got the wiring all done back in there. Made it all pretty. Before I put the Y pipe back on, on the 2000 and 2001, not the 2001 and a half, that's a different intake manifold and some things change on these cars. They have what they call an F hose. So I wanted to check that out first. Fair enough, it has a big tear in it. And the F hose goes right in here. And what happens is you have boost pressure that comes in this, this pipe right here. There's a check valve on this end and a check valve on this end. 
And so what happens is it just blows a ton of air out there or, or boost pressure. And that would cause a check engine light or your positive deviation code on, on the ECU. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this out for them. And that should solve that problem. Got everything back together. I found some screws, the correct screws for him on the reservoir. Top's done, wiring's done. Underneath the car, I'm gonna, there's a coolant leak, so I'm gonna drain the coolant, change out the O-ring in the door radiator hose. It has a power steering leak on, on the line, so I'll, I'll clamp those down. Coolant leak right there, so I'm gonna change out that O-ring. Hopefully that'll fix that leakage problem. Move up this O-ring just a little bit. The O-ring is installed. And we go ahead and lube it up a little bit and then uh, put it all back together. Alright, now we'll uh, refill it and see if it still leaks. Now we just have to see if this gauge holds the vacuum. If it holds vacuum, we don't have any leaks, and I'll go ahead and fill it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open it up. what's leaking here and here I'm gonna go ahead and clamp each one of these off and uh, cut these off and put new clamps on it and we're gonna go ahead and replace the window actuator in here uh, so we need to take this door card off. You can see here's that broken piece. I've made a decision that I'm gonna go ahead and, and do this, this window regulator without showing you guys how to do it. I'm gonna end this video here. Just what I've decided to do is this is this window regulator replacement is complex enough. I think I'm going to do a do-it-yourself video to replace a window regulator. And I'll go ahead and do it on the other side since both these doors are, are trashed. I'll go ahead and get this one done.
hopefully soon or shortly I'll have a do-it-yourself video on how to replace a window regulator for the rear. It could it would work for an A4, a B5 A4 or a B5 S4, either one. All right. So until the next video, take care, you guys.